What is a genome anyway? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I've never heard of the word. I think it's something to do with like DNA and genetics. So what is a genome? Your genome is the instruction manual containing the genes and all the information your body needs to make you, you. That information is DNA. It's a really simple language made up of four chemicals, otherwise known as bases, and it's kind of like the strings on the ukulele. I was wondering when the ukulele was going to come into play. OK. So these four bases are A, T, G and C. There's no T note in music, though. I know that much. I know. We Just go with me. We're just fudging okay. it a little bit. So, obviously, in a song, you've got a series of notes, and the order that those notes are played in make up the song. You get a series of words. You get a book. And, basically, the series or sequence of these chemicals contain all the information that can code for the building blocks of life, which is what your body needs to function. And... All of that information is your genome. If I'm going to find out what those different letters in my DNA are, I need to have my genome sequenced. And to do that, you need to extract your DNA, send a sample of blood or saliva to the lab where it's processed, spin the sample to purify the DNA, divide it into microscopic amounts, and put it on a slide. The slide goes into a sequencer, which decodes the DNA into the A's, T's, C's and G's that Izzy told me about and translates them into the ones and zeros of computer data. All that data needs to be stored somewhere, like here. Suddenly, my laptop feels a little bit inadequate. But unless someone can unravel what that information means, it's worthless. And that's what Congenica does. They specialise in understanding the genetics behind rare diseases. And they're going to show me how access to vast amounts of data from healthy people like me helps them find the disease-causing variants in someone's genome. In human genetics in, in general, data has really enabled a lot of analysis that previously were not possible. When we're whole genome sequencing a, a patient, we have a complete readout of the whole DNA on a single person. So that's around 3 billion letters of the DNA. And that roughly uncovers between 4 to 5 million genetic variants. And if you're thinking about the rare disease, we're then just interested in finding the one variant out of those 5 million that are causing disease. So it seems like this is a really effective way of finding needles in a haystack very quickly. So the technology made your job a lot easier. Yes, absolutely. For a single person's genome, for example, can take up to 100 gigabytes. So processing all that data takes a long time. With Sapientia, we can do it much faster. And these, you know, has tremendously reduced the patient diagnostic odyssey that these patients go through, which is on average five years to now just, you know, five days. Wow. So getting my genome sequenced could be valuable to scientists like Eva, who need more information about people's genetics for their work. But is this like opening Pandora's box? What might I find out from my DNA? Are there secrets hidden in my genome? Maybe Anna Middleton can help. Initially, when I started doing this, I thought, oh, having my genome sequenced was just going to find out what makes my eyes brown or yeah. whatever, but it's going to tell me everything and maybe even some information that I might not want to know. It's really difficult to know how you're going to react when you actually get the result. And you should be thinking about, well, if there are serious health risks, am I actually going to do something different in my life? If you're told you have very high risks of getting cancer in the future, you need to be thinking about screening. Do you want to take uh, risk-reducing surgery? Do you need to be thinking about how do you start that conversation with your parents? Because it means it will have come from one of them. I can see it as maybe some scary information in there. I'm also looking at it like it has the potential to find out so much useful information, not just for myself, but even just for research. I can't work out if I'm a pioneer or a guinea pig at this stage. Do you know what? I'd say you both. Yeah. Because in order to really understand the link between genes and health and disease, we need loads of people to be sequenced so that we can look across whole populations. What are the patterns? And you can only do that if you have big data. Do you reckon everybody should be getting their genome sequenced? Well, 
I think it's up to individuals to decide for themselves. We need lots of data to do the research to understand the links between genes and health and disease. But really, it does come down to an individual. What do you want to know? How helpful is it? How do you talk about it in the family? I've been thinking through the pros and cons of having my genome sequenced. Eva's work means I can help other people, but there is a risk of hearing I'll develop cancer. And as Anna said, once you know that, you can't go back. But I really want to find out what my DNA might be worth. My mum and sisters are okay with it, so I'm going to do it. <laughs>